Hi everyone, I'm Linda Reimer, one of the librarians at the Southeast Stabane County Library. Welcome to Library Connections, our weekly readers, viewers, and listeners advisory video cast. Enjoy! Library Connections number 47. This is the Friday, April 9th, 2021 edition of Library Connections. Kicking things off with the top five fiction bestsellers of the week from the New York Times at number one, The Hill We Climb by Amanda Gorman. The poem read on President Joe Biden's inauguration day by the youngest poet to write and perform an inaugural poem. At number two, The Red Book by James Patterson and David Ellis, the second book in the Black Book Thriller series. Chicago detective Bill Harney investigates his own past. At number three, The Four Winds by Kristen Hanna. As dust storms roll during the Great Depression, Elsa must choose between saving the family and farm or heading west. At number four, The Midnight Library by Matt Haig. Nora Seed finds a library beyond the edge of the universe that contains books with multiple possibilities of the lives one could have lived. And at number five, Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens. In a quiet town on the North Carolina coast in 1969, a young woman who survived alone in the marsh becomes a murder suspect. Moving on to our top five nonfiction bestsellers of the week, at number one, The Code Breaker by Walter Isaacson. How the Nobel Prize winner Jennifer Doudna and her colleagues invented CRISPR, a tool that can edit DNA. At number two, Green Lights by Matthew McConaughey. The Academy Award-winning actor shares snippets from the diaries he kept over the last 35 years. At number three, The Beauty of Living Twice by Sharon Stone. The actress and human rights activist recounts her childhood difficulties and biggest accomplishments. At number four, The Body Keeps the Score by Bessel van der Kolk. How trauma affects the body and mind and innovative treatments for recovery. And at number five, Cast by Isabel Wilkerson. The Pulitzer Prize winning journalist examines aspects of caste systems across civilizations and reveals a rigid hierarchy in America today. Our first recommended read for this week is a really cool new nonfiction title. It's called The Barbazon, The Hotel That Set Women Free, written by Paulina Bren. Historian Bren delivers an entertaining and enlightening account of New York's Barbizon Hotel and the role it played in fostering women's ambitions in 20th century America. Brent presents the hotel's clientele as risk takers who comforted their parents by moving into what was billed as New York's most exclusive hotel residence for young women. Named for a 19th century French art movement, the Barbizon opened in 1927 and remained in operation until its conversion into luxury condos in 2007. Mademoiselle Magazine housed its guest editors there, Breen notes, and the Catherine Gibbs Secretarial School 
rented two full floors for students and their house mother. Brent profiles noteworthy guests, including Molly Brown, who survived the sinking of the Titanic, actors Tippi Hendren and Grace Kelly, singers Shirley Jones and Liza Minnelli, whose mom, Judy Garland, called nearly daily to check on her daughter, and writers Joan Didion and Jean Stafford. Sylvia Plath was one of many future authors and designers, Meg Wolitzer and Betsy Johnson among them, who stayed at the Barbizon after winning a spot in Mademoiselle's guest editor program. In Plath's novel, The Bell Jar, the hotel was called the Amazon. Carefully researched, yet breezily written, this appealing history gives the Barbizon its rightful turn in the spotlight. And that book is definitely going on my to-read list. Our second recommended read for this week is the new Candace Fox mystery, Gathering Dark. Early in this superior crime novel, from Ned Kelly Award winner Fox, Blair Harbor chooses not to report the battered, distraught teenage girl who robbed the LA gas station where Blair works and stole her car. Recently paroled after a murder conviction, Blair feels sympathy for the poor kid. The next day, Blair's former cellmate, Sneak, shows up to beg for help in finding her missing daughter, who happens to be the young thief. Meanwhile, Detective Jessica Sanchez becomes a pariah in the LAPD after a grateful citizen bequeaths her a Brentwood mansion for outstanding performance. Blair and Sneak's quest brings them into the orbit of Ada Maverick, a stone-cold crime boss who's willing to help them in their search for her own reasons. And as that is unfolding, Detective Sanchez is beginning to realize that there was something hinky about the case that sent Blair to prison. Vividly drawn characters and striking individual scenes, such as Jessica's visit to a dealer in murderabilia, or Blair watching M13 gangsters happily play with her pet gopher, make this brutal but ultimately hopeful tale of desperate women a standout. It deserves a wide audience. And that is the Publisher's Weekly Review. Our first audiobook recommendation for this week is a murder mystery. It's called Murder in the Margins, written by Margaret Loudon and read by Marnie Young. It looks as if Gothic American novelist Penelope Parrish may turn out to be a one-hit wonder. After realizing modest but genuine success with The Lady of the Moors, Penn finds herself stymied by writer's block. Fortunately, she's able to parlay her talents into a stint as writer-in-residence at the Open Book Club bookshop in the village of Upper Chumley on Stoke. She arrives just in time for Worthington Fest, an annual hoo-ha sponsored by Arthur Worthington, the village's resident aristocrat. Unfortunately, the fest is marred by the discovery of Regina Bosworth's body in the wine cellar of Worthington Castle. To tell the truth, Bossy Regina isn't much mourned in Upper Chumley on Stoke. Her husband, Gordon, quickly finds solace in the company of barmaid Daphne Potter, while Penn's new friends, Gladys Watkins and India Culpepper, whisper avidly 
about the secrets Regina held over the heads of her fellow Chumleans. It isn't until Charlotte Davenport, Arthur's fiance, asks for help that Penn decides Regina's murderer really ought to be caught. Charlotte is much envied by the villagers, both for her success as a novelist and for her conquest of the village's own duke, who they think should be marrying an English girl, and preferably one of their daughters, rather than an upstart Yank. But Penn, who isn't envious, agrees to help her fellow American. Soon the inquisitive writer is probing Regina's past and finding more spice than she's enjoyed at the local takeaway. A lively series debut for an engaging heroine. And that's the Kirkus Review. Our second audiobook recommendation for this week is titled The Whispering House, written by Elizabeth Brooks and read by Elizabeth Klett. Brooks cooks up a spellbinding gothic story featuring a sinister country house. Aspiring poet Freya Lyell, 23, mourns the apparent death by suicide of her mercurial older sister Stella at 21. Stella seems to have jumped from a cliff not far from stately Brine Hall in England's West Country. Five years on, Freya and her father attend a cousin's wedding on the grounds of the imposing house. After a few drinks and the glimpse of a mysterious man emerging from the cliff path, Freya walks into the house's front hall to discover a portrait of a girl who appears to be Stella. When she returns to inquire about the picture, she is lured into a web of dark intrigue spun by the house's inhabitants, artist Corey Brine, who remembers having Stella pose for him the week before her death, and Corey's enigmatic mother, Diana. While there is never any doubt who the bad guys and good guys are, the yarn moves swiftly and with sufficient suspense to its predictable denouncement. Brooks's lean prose never gets in the way of the plot. This is an exquisitely creepy page turner. So if you're in the mood for creepy, check this one out. Our first streaming recommendation for this week is the new film Concrete Cowboy. It's available through Netflix. The coming of age drama Concrete Cowboy is set in a predominantly black neighborhood in Philadelphia, where a handful of residents maintain a rickety old stable. The Stranger Things actor Caleb McLaughlin plays Cole, a teenage troublemaker whose mother kicks him out of their Detroit home, sending him to live in Philly with his horse trainer father. There, Cole discovers a sense of community and purpose while trying to avoid the temptation to make some easy money with the local drug dealers. The director, Ricky Staub, co-wrote the script with Dan Walzer, adapting a Greg Neary novel. The plot hits some standard, wayward kid tries to go straight beats, but the fine cast, also including Lorraine Toussaint and Clifford Smith, known as Method Man, and the lovely images of horses framed against an urban landscape, work together to establish an unusual and inviting world. And that is the New York Times overview of the film. Our second streaming recommendation for this week is the new documentary Hemingway, 
which is being shown this week on PBS, and you can access this through the PBS app on your mobile device or smart TV, or you can just go to PBS online. So having said that, let me tell you a little about the documentary. Ken Burns and Lynn Novak have done it again. The documentarians who have occupied the top tier of filmmaking about American history with projects like baseball, the Vietnam War, and the Civil War, returned to PBS with a three-part series on the life and legacy of one of the most important authors of the 20th century, Ernest Hemingway. Following the style of their other productions, they blend expert interviews, archival photographs, and, especially in this case, the writing of the man who gives this series its name. Over six hours, Burns, Novick, and regular writer Jeffrey C. Ward, a winner of five Emmys for Burns projects, don't just offer a chronological biography of Hemingway, they dig into his strengths and weaknesses as a writer and human being. They are unafraid of tackling his abusive side and claims of misogyny and racism, resulting in a three-dimensional portrait of a 20th century icon. And that's the RogerEbert.com review. And our third streaming recommendation for this week is the new movie Thunder Force, available through Netflix. Melissa McCarthy joins up with the director Ben Falcone, her husband and frequent collaborator, for this superhero farce about what happens when ordinary people gain extraordinary powers. Octavia Spencer plays a scientist who has developed a chemical formula to enhance human abilities. McCarthy plays her long estranged childhood best friend who accidentally takes a dose of that secret juice. The two team up to challenge a gang of supervillains played by Bobby Carnival and Jason Bateman, among others. They also commiserate over the aches and pains of middle age while rediscovering the bond they had as kids. Expect to see some broad but sweet comedy here aimed at the audiences who enjoyed McCarthy and the writer-director Falcone's Tammy and the Boss. And that is the New York Times Review. Our Hoopla recommendation for this week is a mystery series. It's season one of the series Detective Ellen Lucas. This is a great series. It is in German. The dialogue is in German. It does have English subtitles, but just FYI if subtitles aren't your thing. So there's a brief synopsis of the plot. She's a badass. She's middle-aged and she refuses to wear sensible shoes. A commander in the boys club of the Regensburg police, Ellen Lucas, earns the respect of civilians and fellow detectives alike. So check out Detective Ellen Lucas, season one on Hoopla. And moving on to our odd duck recommendation of the week. Week, I'm going to offer an updated tour of smart TVs and streaming video players, a tour without a cockeyed view. I am going to go over what I went over last week with a picture that is perfectly straight. I'm going to talk about my Apple TV player, my Roku smart TV, and an old Blu-ray player I have that, despite being a number of years old now, is a smart DVD player because it connects to the internet and has a few channels, AKA streaming apps like Netflix that I can access through the player. So hang on to your hats and we'll have a straight and not cockeyed view momentarily. Here we go. 
Hi everyone, welcome to the Odd Duck for this week. This week I'm going to repeat the streaming video player tour that I gave last week and make sure that the screen isn't cockeyed, straight on and straight. So we're going to sort of go over the same material. I may mention things a little differently. I'm going to start out this time by just talking about the three devices I have here. I've got a LG Roku Smart TV, which is the big screen we see in front of us. I have an Apple TV player, which despite the name, it's not actually a TV. It's a box size player, about the size of a hockey puck. You can see there at the bottom of the screen. And then to the right of that on the table, the Smart Blu-ray player, which I remembered I had as I was putting this together last week. If you do have an old DVD player, you might want to check and see if it's smart. You may not have used it in the past, but if you have a smart Blu-ray player, one that will connect to Netflix, for example, like this one will, that's a neat way to get streaming. You might already have the equipment at home. Having said that, I'm going to start out by talking about Roku a little bit, which is what we see in front of us. Now, each of these devices has a settings menu option. You'll see here home is highlighted, but if you go down there on the left at the bottom, it says settings. Settings is always where you would go, not just to change things, but always to connect to the internet. So when you're setting up a new device, you need to go to settings to connect your device to your Wi-Fi. So having said that, I'm going to talk a little bit about the HDMI inputs because with a smart TV, of course, you can plug things in. I've got three HDMI inputs you see at the top of the menu there. HDMI 1, that's actually my Apple TV. We'll see a little preview in a second. HDMI 2 is my DVD player. And I don't have anything else plugged in, but if I did, I could plug it in to HDMI 3. Live TV, if you were thinking of getting rid of cable, you might want to consider live TV options. And that, by that I mean getting an over-the-air... Ooh. Sorry, that's the PBS. That's whatever's on PBS right now. You might consider getting an over-the-air antenna. Now, they don't look like they did years ago. They're not rabbit ears anymore, and they don't have to go on your roof. They are about the size of a vinyl record album, maybe a, an 8-inch record in a sleeve, and you put them up on your wall. Costs maybe 20 I think I paid about $25 for the one I've got, and they bring you in local over-the-air channels very clearly for free, so something to consider. So having said that, I'm going to go back to the left here to the main menu and go down to the option third from the bottom. It says streaming channels. That's where you go on a Roku to add more streaming channels. Featured, they have a bunch of things here, new and updated, but I'm going to go down to recommended because it shows some of the most popular ones. They have hundreds of channels for Roku. Some of them are niche channels, but they do have quite a few. And they have the popular ones. They have, yes, the Roku channel itself, which offers some video content. You can get a subscription to Paramount Plus, Disney Plus, HBO Max, for example, Hulu. Those are paid subscriptions, but then you can watch them th through your smart TV. PBS, that's free, of course. You can get a PBS Passport subscription, as I mentioned in last week's Odd Duck, and that will get you more content. And recently they have added, you'll see it says Apple TV there. You can indeed access content that you've purchased previously from Apple. So I'm going to go back to the left here and get out of this and go back to the main screen. And you have a remote that looks like this. So if I go over here to the right before I take you on a trip of a smart Blu-ray player there. These are the apps I have on here. These are the ones I use. I am a big fan of TuneIn Radio. I have that on a lot. You can get radio stations from all over the world and have it come up on your TV. I enjoy listening to that. Hoopla, of course, is the libraries app. So there are lots of apps you can get. You'll notice there's a WEMY news app. So if you miss the local news... You can watch news clips from WEMY on Roku. And I think that's the Cliff Notes version of it. So I'm going to go back to the main menu here. And then I'm going to 
go to the right because we, we need to get to the top of the page. We need to get to HDMI 2, which is what we're going to start with. That's the Blu-ray player. And the reason I'm going to start with that is because the Blu-ray player has fewer options. Unlike the Roku and the Apple TV, the Blu-ray player doesn't have an doesn't have an app store for streaming channels. So you you get what they have installed. And this is not a new Blu-ray player. So if you were to buy a newer player, you might have different terminology. Actually, where we're going to go is where it says Netcast, second from the right. And you'll notice on the very right, it says Setup. That's where you would go. This is how old this Blu-ray player is. Instead of Settings, it says Setup. That's where you would go with this player to connect to the internet. But I'm going to navigate with my remote to the right here until I get to Netcast and select that and it'll come up in a moment it show me the channels available for my blu-ray player now i don't have any of these logged in because i don't use my blu-ray player for this because the newer streaming devices have so many more options but you'll see you've got netflix voodoo which is a popular store to to watch movies and tv shows cinema now I haven't done anything with that. I'm not even sure what that is. MLB, of course, baseball. So there are, there are a few options here. This is a good way. They've got Pandora there, Napster. So there, there are some things here, weather.com, but it's a smaller selection of video channels or apps. I use those terms interchangeably. Oops, sorry, I didn't mean to go that far and that fast. You, you'll hear me, you might hear me say channel. I mean app. I mean the same, it means the same thing more or less nowadays as devices are becoming more integrated. We have apps on phones and pretty much if you're talking about a smart TV channel, it would be the Netflix app or the Voodoo app. And that in a nutshell is the LG Smart Blu-ray player. Now I'm going to go back to my main Roku screen because now I want to go over to HDMI 1 and look at the Apple TV menu. Apple TV has a lot more options than the LG DVD player. So at the top, they're advertising for All Mankind. That's a new series. Apple, like Amazon and Google and Netflix, they have their own content, which you can get. You can subscribe to Apple TV Plus. That's another paid service. And that's what you see there below the bright red cherry the black little app that says Apple TV. That's how you get into their specific content. But if you want to get new streaming channels, you want to go to the App Store, which is the blue one there. And here we see it, it, quite a few options. At the top, it says Discover, Apps, Games, Arcade, Purchased. You can indeed play games through an Apple TV player. Purchased, there is a purchased option for places where you can purchase videos, um, including TV shows and movies. There's an app store for, well, for some content, some, some services like Netflix, those are just streaming. That's it. You have access for the flat rate you pay per month to their entire streaming library. Ditto places like Disney Plus, Paramount Plus, HBO Max. Other places like other apps, like Amazon, for example, Amazon has a prime video service, which comes with more than just videos, but you can pay for their subscription service and you do get access to some extra content for free, but you can also buy TV shows and movies through the Amazon app store, through the Google play store. If I scroll down here, we'll see some more of the options they have. Explore Paramount. You go way down here. They have news apps to stay informed. For sports fans, concerts in your living room. So there's a whole bunch of stuff there. I'm going to go back to the main Apple screen because that's their app store for video channels in a nutshell. So the second app there is actually podcasts, which I'm not going to get into, but you can subscribe to your favorite podcast and have them stream through your TV. And you'll notice I also have some apps here that I have on the Roku TV, like side of it. Netflix, PBS, Prime Video, YouTube. I can watch those from the Apple TV menu as well. 
and the picture quality is is better. The Roku picture quality is very good, but I would say the Apple TV quality is better. Apple TV does something different than the other services. They separate out their movies and TV shows. So if you want to look at movies, you go to the movies app. And this again at the top, you'll see it says purchased, top movies, wish list, genre, recommended. They have a whole lot of options. Search, of course, if you want to search for something, but they have they have a lovely interface to be to be fair. Um, I use Roku more than I use Apple TV, but it, it really is lovely video wise. And you can see here as you scroll through, they've got all kinds of popular stuff. So if we go back up to the top, just again note the menu options at the very top of the screen. And now I'm going to get out of this and go back to the main menu so we can scroll over one more and take a look at the TV shows app. And we'll see how that comes up. Top TV shows. You saw briefly purchased and I'll show you that in a moment. Top TV shows, just what you would think it is. These are what they say are the most popular ones based on however many people are watching them, I imagine. Purchased for all these, if I go all the way up at the top, these are things I have purchased maybe to watch on an iPad or an iPhone. In my case, I prefer a TV because it's easier to see. I'm, you know, 55, whoops, purchased. I got to go back to purchase. Sorry about that. Got out of it. Go down. If we wanted to watch season seven of MASH, we could get into it. And the picture quality, of course, this is the best one to show you because this is from the 70s, but... It should come up in a minute, give you an idea. And that, let's let's show you something that's a little bit here, here, Ice Age. That should be a little better, a little clearer because it's newer. And, oh, this is a lovely feature, resume playing. If you're watching a movie that you've purchased, no matter which uh, streaming vendor you got it from, or whether it's through Netflix, you don't have to buy it. Where, wherever you get it from, if you stop, it will stay right where you stopped until you go back, even if you don't go back to the video for a year. So we'll resume playing. I must have been watching this Christmas time. There um, we go. A tree! A Christmas tree! <laughs> Do you know how ridiculous... Just a little bit there. That's under copyright, I'm sure. But you get the idea. The picture quality is really good. And I think that's it in a nutshell. If you have questions about streaming video players, let me know. I am recording this early in the morning so we don't have a glare on the TV screen. Going back to Apple TV. Um, I'll just show that you the video quality here a little bit. It's very good. This is PBS. I was watching the Hemingway documentary last night. It's on the first episode. And oh, we have commercial. <laughs> well, well, I won't make you watch the Bank of America commercial. Push us forward. Oh, that's a bummer. Uh, there, that's better. You get the picture quality. They're they're showing you the new people, and the people that are older that have inspired them in the past. And there, yeah, that's clear. The people from the past, not so clear. Oh, seven seconds remaining. We've got only one ad. Okay, maybe we'll take a look at the first part of uh, Hemingway here. Major funding for Hemingway was provided by the veteran. And you can fast forward. <laughs> Just showing the picture. Well, in some way there we go. Influenced by him. It's like he changed all the furniture in the room. <laughs> and you can stop. But you get the idea. So that's streaming video players in a nutshell with a straight view and not a cockeyed view. Thanks for watching. If you have questions about this weekly video cast, let me know. You can send an email to me at rhymerl at stls.org and I'll get back to you. Again, that's R E I M E R L at stls.org and of course you can always call the library too and I'll give you the phone number in just a second.
current library hours are Mondays and Fridays, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Tuesdays and Thursdays, 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. Saturdays, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And we are currently closed on Wednesdays and Sundays. Here we see the library's website found at ssclibrary.org. You can find a whole host of information about the library through our website, including our calendar of events and the list of online catalogs. The library's appointments page is also found on our website. Simply click on the purple Make Appointment text located near the top of each page on our website, and you can make an appointment to use a public computer or for curbside pickup. StarCat and the BookMine app. StarCat is the catalog of physical library materials, all of which are available for all cardholders of the public libraries in the Southern Tier Library system, and that encompasses the public libraries in Steuben, Chemung, Yates, Schuyler, and Allegheny counties. If you'd like to use the web version of the catalog, you can go online and go to starcat.stls.org. And if you prefer using an app, you can download the BookMine app, which is seen on the right side of the screen, from your app store. The Digital Catalog, with companion apps Libby and Overdrive. The Digital Catalog features eBooks, downloadable audiobooks, a handful of streaming videos, and digital magazines. You can access the catalog online at stls.overdrive.com, or if you prefer to use an app, download the Libby app to your newer device or the Overdrive app to your older device or your Kindle tablet. You can also use a dedicated e-reader like a Kindle Paperwhite and enjoy library eBooks on that device. The digital catalog like StarCat is available to all card holders within the Southern Tier library system, and it's a terrific catalog. Hoopla. The Hoopla catalog features ebooks, comic books, full length albums, downloadable audiobooks, and streaming videos, including both TV shows and movies. All Hoopla items are available for instant checkout, no waiting, for Southeast Steuben County Library card holders with a maximum of six checkouts per month. You can find the Hoopla catalog online at hooplaDigital.com, or you can download the Hoopla app to your smartphone, tablet, smart TV, or video streaming player. Communicating with the library. If you have questions about library services during the pandemic, or want to make an appointment for curbside pickup, you are welcome to go the traditional route and simply give us a call. The library's phone number is area code 607-936-3713. You can also connect with the library via social media. The library has pages on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. Library blogs. We have five of them. The Book Club for Adults, which offers information as you would expect about the monthly book club for adults. The local history blog, Corning NY History, Creation Stationery, the Makerspace blog, Story Musings, a blog hosted by the library's resident author and head of adult services, Michelle Wells, and Tech and Book Talk, a readers, viewers, and listeners advisory blog, which also occasionally offers some helpful how-to tech tips. Try saying that 10 times fast helpful tech tips. And here are our references of the week. And that's the program for this week. I'll be back next week with a new edition of Library Connections. Have a great day.